Another player gone down. The header is in, and it's equalizer. This isn't simply just going to come down to Mendoza if he thinks that he made a mistake or not. I think that is a foul on Kyrie Shelton. What a turn of events. Welcome to Instant Replay, where we take a closer look at the most controversial calls in Major League Soccer. It's the Match Day 19 edition. I am Andrew Wiebe. We start in Kansas City with a trio of plays. 12th minute, Gadi Kinda driving toward the end line. Here comes Dino Maldonado, and he's sliding, sliding, taking Kinda down. Only no call, no foul on the field. Referee Rosendo Mendoza says, uh-uh, not for me, but the VAR. Eunice Marcacci sends Mendoza to the monitor. Once there, Mendoza sees what I see. A reckless challenge from Maldonado sliding in. He doesn't get the ball, and yes, he gets Gotti Kinda. LAFC fans are probably saying, hold on! Kinda starts to go down early. That may be true, but it does not negate the challenge itself. It's reckless, and there is contact. That's a penalty. Ball to the spot, Kansas City up, 1-0. Well, LAFC pulled a goal back from Maldonado, you might be curious to know. And then in the 54th minute, Daniel Shallowy is driving in on goal after a brilliant backheel pass from Polito. Watch this play closely. Ryan Hollingshead is trailing, trying to defend, and it sure looks like he is the one pulling Shallowy back to prevent an opportunity on goal. Shallowy misses, he throws his hands up, look to the sideline. Peter Vermees is furious. He is mimicking the grabbing motion as well. They want a penalty. There's no penalty coming, and I think that's the right call. When we look closer at this play, what do you see? Yes, you see a grab by Hollingshead, but even more so, I see Shallow with a handful of jersey and a stiff arm holding off that LAFC defender from the very jump. Could this be a foul on Hollingshead and a penalty? Yes. Is it a foul on Shallow? Also yes. To me, no call is correct in this situation. If Shallow focuses on finishing, doesn't get that handful of jersey, he probably goes down under the contact, and then it would rightfully be a foul and a penalty. But that's not what happens. Well done to Mendoza and Marachi on this play. I think this is justice. No call, no foul, play on. Try to finish that one next time, Daniel. I said three, here's the third. Stoppage time after Carlos Vela scored what would be a game winner. Sporting Kansas City thought they got one back via Roger Espinoza, only er, slow down, stop. Marachi saw something in the beginning of the attacking phase of play that calls it all back. So what happened? Watch Kyrie Shelton closely here. The ball's a little bit loose, and whoa, he swings through and absolutely demolishes Aaron Long's knee. He doesn't get the ball. Folks, that is a clear foul, and if you speed it up here, you can see that this is the beginning of the attacking phase of play for Sporting Kansas City. They possess, they put LAFC under pressure, and eventually score. Therefore, when it's reviewed and called back, no goal, that is the correct call in my opinion. Well done again to the crew on this one. To Nashville we go, sixth minute. Nico Joachini wants a foul here. Nima Sagafi's not giving it. But VAR, Carol Ann Chouinard, sends Sagafi to the monitor. And as is his right, he takes a look and he sticks with the call on the field. No penalty. I'm going to have to disagree with Sagafi on this one. Watch this play closely. You might be focused on that little shove through the midsection of Joachini by Jack Mayer. That might be a foul, but the foul that I see comes with the feet. Watch where Jack Mayer's right foot overlaps the right foot of Joachini in front of him. He trips him. He invades his space, doesn't get the ball. Yes, pushes a little bit with the forearm as well. Add it all up, in my opinion, that's a penalty. Joachini is not embellishing here. He's taken down. So St. Louis are aggrieved, and they're further frustrated in the 41st minute with Nashville up 1-0 when this corner kick ends up in the back of the net. Only the flag goes up for offside on Nico Giochini. No goal. Now, when you watch it, that matches what you're seeing. Watch where Giochini is when the ball comes back across the box. He's clearly in an offside position if it came off a St. Louis player. Now, when you look closely and have the right replay, you can see the ball actually comes off a Nashville player, which means Giochini is onside. There's a further question. Look closely at this angle from behind the goal. Did the ball come off Joaquini's arm and into the back of the net? His intent in that moment doesn't matter per the handball law. If he scores from his hand, it's a no goal. Sagafi's trying to break all of this down at the monitor, thanks to a flag from Carol Ann Chouinard. And he says, this is a good goal, and I agree. That's because when I watch where this ball hits Joaquini to go in the back of the net, 
it looks to me like it's somewhere in that armpit upper arm region that IFAB says isn't actually a handball. You might disagree, but what I'd tell you is that there's not clear and obvious error that it hit arm, and it has to be clear and obvious. You may disagree with me, but there's no clear and obvious evidence that it hit Joaquini's arm in the area that it would cause an offense. Sagafi takes a look and changes the call on the field. Goal given for St. Louis. And I'm with Sagafi again in the 67th minute. Hani Mukhtar is incredibly unselfish here and plays the ball across the box to Jacob Schaffelberg, who is just going to tap it in. Only Kyle Hebert is saying, no way, I'm winning the ball. He is not as fast as Schaffelberg. He gets his second yellow and a red. Those are the marching orders. No double jeopardy for Dogso if he's playing the ball. Is he playing the ball? I think he is. I just don't think he sees Schaffelberg coming quite that quickly. Well done to Sagafi for judging this one. Two more from the nation's capital where Wayne Rooney was a little frustrated by the refereeing. So let's take a closer look. 26 minutes, Steve Birnbaum with the pull down. Malik Badawi says, oh, that's denial of an obvious goal scoring opportunity. Dog so red so, as we say on this show. Let's just break it down so we all understand why that's a red card because the foul in the pull by Birnbaum is blindingly obvious. You got to consider four things. One, the distance between the offense and the goal. We're right at the top of the 18. The RSL player is going toward goal. He has an opportunity to score. Two, the general direction of the play. They're going toward goal. That much is clear. Three, the likelihood of keeping or gaining control of the ball. Birnbaum starts this grab about five yards before the ball is even past him. If he doesn't grab, the RSL player is spinning in behind, and then he has a 1v1 with goalkeeper Tyler Miller. He will get to this ball if he's not fouled. And finally, the location and number of defenders. There are no recovering defenders that will affect this play. It's just Tyler Miller who's coming out of his goal, making this, in my opinion, an even more obvious goal-scoring opportunity. You just got around the keeper. So that red was spot on for me. And in the 86th minute, there was a penalty shot for DC that Wayne really wanted. Fletcher's at the edge of the 18 inside the box, and Vera is defending. Badawi sees it and says, no, not for me, no penalty. Here's what I see. I don't see much contact here. It's pretty minimal. There's a little hip bump by Vera, and then there's also a little grab and pull. See that left hand on the shoulder of Fletcher? In my opinion, if this is called on the field, VAR Daniel Radford is not flagging it for a clear and obvious error. It would be a penalty. But ultimately, in my opinion, this is a judgment call for Badawi. To me, the contact, pretty minimal, and Fletcher's looking for it and goes down. I have no problem with no PK. I think this was handled just fine. All right, that's it for us on Instant Replay for match day 19, as always. Here's how to get involved if you want a referee at the grassroots level. Clearly, you care about the laws, now go out and apply them. And if you're on the sidelines anywhere from the very bottom to the top of the game, remember, abusing the referees is just not okay. These men and women work so hard and do their very best. And ultimately, as we know on this show, a lot of it is just a judgment call. All right, big thanks to my editor, Phil Ivanko, my producer, Rich Hernandez. I'm Andrew Wiebe. We'll see you next time.